Hello, everybody.、Uh, this is Doctor Anfu, and I'm here to show you how to、um, calibrate your variables for FSQCA.、Uh, this is a video.、Uh, this is a second video in the same、uh, series,、uh, FFSQCA data analysis.、Um, Today I'm just going to show you the direct method of calibration.、Um, in Charles Regan's book, Redesigning Social Inquiry, Fuzzy Sets and Beyond, he introduces two methods of calibration. I took screenshots of the pages on direct method of calibration, and I made a PDF、um, here. So you can see it's only. Seven pages.、Um, you can read this section of the book and decide、um, your、uh, algorithm for calibration. But、um, in this video, I made an SPSS syntax file、uh, that you're free to just copy, and、uh, and that'll make your FSQCA calibration much easier later on.、Um, So today I'm going to introduce you two methods of calibration. The first method is by using the FSQCA software, which is described in the FSQCA manual. Now you can free download from the FSQCA official website.、Um, so once you have this manual, you、uh, you can Control F, hit Control F, and search for the word calibration. And you will see,、um, Charles recommended、um, just using the software. You hit variable first, and then you choose compute. So let's do that. Let me open the FSQC software, and open the Excel file that I made previously for this video. As you can see, in this original data. All variables were measured on Likert scales, which were not on zero to one point,、uh, zero zero to one scale. So,、um, the Likert scales are usually measured on one to five or one to seven. So, that's not good for FSQC data analysis. Let's calibrate it so that every variable will range from zero to one. So hit variable and choose compute. And first,、uh, you need to make up a name for your new variable because I'm going to calibrate variable p in this video. So I'm going to name it p underscore five. And then、um, I'm going to click on single click on calibrate.、Uh, there are four parameters in this calibrate formula. The first parameter. Is your original variable, so that's p. So I'm gonna click on p.、Um, and your second, third, and fourth parameters are three numbers、um, th that that you use as a, a criteria for the calibration. So let's go back to the FSQCA manual and scroll down. You see, in this paragraph, Charles described for us、um, what are those three numbers. So the first number is a value of old value that corresponds to the threshold for membership. If you want to fully understand the concept of the four, the criteria for full membership, the crossover point, and the criteria for non-members for non-membership,、um, I recommend you to read this textbook relevant sections. But here. I'm going to choose because p my variable p was measured on a one to seven Likert scale. I'm going to choose the number seven as a criteria for full membership. I'm going to choose the number one as a criteria for full non-membership, and I'm going to choose the midpoint four as the crossover point. And then I'm going to come back to this、um, calculator and insert seven. To the first parameter, four as a second parameter, and one as a third parameter, and hit OK. Now, you see that FSQCA software made us a new column that represents the new variable that we just made. 
the smaller this number. The more this variable, the more this case was in the out of the set um, of this this um, variable. So, so this set is uh, the p represent for um, academic performance, and the higher this number, the value, uh, the better the academic performance that student reported. So it's the same here. Although every value here was calibrated on the 0 to 1 scale, but the, the bigger this number represent the same, you can interpret it in the same way as you interpret the original variable. So the higher this number or closer this number is to 1, the more in the set this case was and the more closer and the closer this number is to zero the more out of this set this this case was so that's the first method of calibration now I'm going to show you the second method of calibration which is done by using SPSS and Excel and I'm going to show you again the direct method of calibration uh, the reason I'm not showing you the indirect method is if you read this book, you realize that the indirect method of calibration is even more subjective than the direct method of calibration. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first, you still have to decide these three points, the full membership, the crossover point, and the full non-membership. Now, some literature recommend people to use the minimum, the maximum, and the mean value of a variable. That is your choice. Again, all the subjective decisions depends on the convention in your research field. Okay. So here's my here's my original data set, and now I'm going to calibrate. Uh, I'm going to calibrate this six variables into zero to one scale. And I made a calibration syntax file based on the this book. Again, here are the relevant pages. It's only seven pages. You can totally read it. It's doable. Mm. So I made the syntax file based on that description. And here's the syntax. There are four steps in this calibration. The first step, the first step is uh, you need to subtract the crossover point from the original value. Because my p variable was measured on a 1 to 7 Likert scale. I'm going to use the number 4 as a crossover point. And my variables A to D, A, B, C, D, E, they were all measured on 1 to 4 Likert scale. So I'm going to choose the value 2.5 as a crossover point. So step 1 in this calibration procedure is to subtract the crossover point from your original value, from your original variable. And the second step is to uh, calculate this ratio for each variable. So based on this textbook, um, Redesigning Social Inquiry, the ratio uh, or the scalars, it differ depends on whether this original value was larger or smaller than your crossover point. You see, all these cases, they were smaller than the original crossover points, or larger, I don't know. But there are different ways to calibrate those um, different cases. So, let's see. Let's see. Um, for, let's see, let's read this part. Let me highlight it. 
for deviation scores above the crossover point. This translation can be accomplished by multiplying the relevant deviation scores. Oh, because it's a picture, I can't highlight it, but you, you can see the, those sentences. By multiplying the relevant deviation scores by the ratio of the log odds associated with the verbal label for the threshold of full membership to the deviation designated as threshold for membership. Okay, so for example, this case was above the crossover point. So the way to calculate this ratio, um, the scalar, is to subtract the crossover point from the original value, and then, um, and then using use three to and divide it by that number. Okay, so that's the scalar that. Um, was for values that were above the crossover point. That's 0 0.0002 as here for all these cases. Um, for, let's see, For deviation scores below the crossover point, this translation can be accomplished by multiplying the deviant relevant deviation scores by the ratio of the log odds associated with a verbal label for the threshold of for non membership to the deviation scores designated as threshold for number non membership. Um, because um, the verbal label for the threshold of for the ratio of the log odds associated with a verbal label for threshold for non membership is all, always going to be negative three. Um, if you can remember, you know, um, based on the standard normal curve. Uh, positive three and negative three, they were cross, they were criteria for full membership and for non membership, um, based on the, the standard normal uh, curve. But anyways, we're just going to use negative three as this ratio, and divide that negative three by this number. Um, that's a number that you calculate it by subtracting. Uh, again, the crossover point from that small value. Okay, so we need to we need to calculate the scale the the ratio the the ratio. Um, this is a ratio for the for the small numbers. So let's do that in Excel. Okay, I'm gonna open a new. Uh, so here you. Let's just name the columns first. Uh, the first column represent the the uh, criteria for full uh, membership. The second column represent the crossover crossover point, and the third column represent uh, the criteria for full non membership. So for the variable p, um, because p was measured on a 1 to 7 Likert scale, so the full membership is 7, the crossover point is 4, and the full number membership is 1. For variable a to e, the criteria for full membership are 4, and the criteria for full non membership are 1. The criteria for crossover point is 2.5 for variable A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so I got all of this. And then the ratio for variables above the crossover point. Is 3 divided by the criteria for full membership minus uh, 
uh, I need to insert equals. And, okay, and then equals uh, the criteria is criteria for full membership minus the criteria of uh, the crossover point. So uh, make sure you enter the equal sign here. Uh, so that's actually um, a calculator in Excel. And if you hit enter, it gives you the results from that calculation. And if you move your cursor to the lower right corner of the cell, you see the cursor turning to a, a black cross, and you can hold on your mouse and drag it down. And Excel will calculate the rest of the value for this column for you based on the same uh, formula that you inputted. And let's do the same with um, for the values below the crossover point. That equals um, negative three divided by. For here, we need to subtract the crossover point from the criteria of full non-membership. So let's click the criteria for full non-membership minus the cr crossover point and close the parenthesis and hit enter. Again, we can drag it down and that gives us um, the number. So here are the ratios. For value P, the ratio for large numbers is 1. And the ratio for small numbers is 1, 2. And it's the same for the rest of the Yeah, so the, this ratio is uh, um, so so this ratio is um, is two. Um, this ratio is let's see. Let's see. This the ratio. If a number is above the crossover point, because in the first step we subtract a crossover point from the original value. If it's cross above crossover point, then the scalar is It's this number and this number. Well, um, in this in this results, um, the the ratio for large numbers and ratio for small numbers are the same because the way we set the this criteria. Um, however, if you set the criteria differently, um, these two numbers, these two columns, might be different. Um, that's why in previous tutorials, I always use a different criteria for those numbers. Anyways, uh, here let's just use this number. So that's 1, and that is 1, 2. That's 2, that's 2 actually. So as you see, um, uh, so in this example that Charles uh, provided, the this number is different for large numbers. The ratio is different for large numbers and small numbers um, because he used the the maximum, the the maximum score, um, the maximum value for this variable as a f criteria for full membership and the minimum value um, for this variable as a, as a criteria for full non-membership. We can actually check the data. Okay, those are not the maximum and minimum, but, um, but it was about that case. So 500, 5, 5,000 and like 2,025. 2, he just picked those numbers as a criteria for full membership and full non-membership. Anyways, 
um, let's modify all those numbers. But you can see it. Um, if there's a different number in these two columns, then you will enter the you will enter the values from the first column in here, and the values in the second column in here. Yeah, I I should just use the maximum minimum value. I should I should not use this. Anyways, um, again, it depends on what your purpose of this data analysis is. If you if you are really interested, just interested in, um, you know what what uh, what type of smartphone usage in during study periods will lead to good academic performance, then you really want to set the crossover point as um, three so that or 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 five you know or six some something higher than just the the mean the the four the, the midpoint um because your because that can, in that in that way you will have a smaller amount of uh cases categorized as the the almost in the mem in the set in this um good academic performance set so it, it depends on what your research questions are, what your propositions are, um, all those matters. Anyways, so now I've um, changed all these values to adapt to this case. And um, I'm going to just hit um, the rest of them are good. So this step three is to just multiply the number that you calculated and the uh, third step and uh, the uh, second step and the first step and the fourth step is to just do this um, exponential thing uh, it's a calculation using the number that you calculate from step three anyways let's uh, just select all the syntax and hit run and our original data set should have um, some new variables so uh, the P underscore 5, P A underscore 5, B underscore 5, C underscore 5, D underscore 5, E underscore 5. Those are new variables that I just calculated using this calibration syntax. And you can do a double check to see whether the original score, if the original score is big, um, whether this new score is also big. Let's see. Um, so, for example, the first case in my... Uh, e variable, uh, the first case reported low value on, on this usage of smartphone during study period and the calibrated value is also low, um, closer to zero. Wait a minute, there's a negative 0.5. That's not supposed to happen. Oh, that's, that's, that's the second value, so that's okay. Yeah, it's only the, the final, the, the fifth the final value that are supposed to be uh, between 0 and 1. Okay, uh, so that's all for this calibration video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you're welcome to watch other videos in the series.